I'm not sure why it's taking me so long to tell you this story. Um, but I thought I today I'm going to start and it might take me one or two videos because, you know, it's not complicated. It's a story I've told many, many times. The audio has been up on my website as well as the articles have been out many for several years. So this is not something that is, you know, brand new or, uh, you know, it's been talked about many times, uh, lots of places, I've done lots of lectures on it. But for some reason, I just haven't, I haven't decided to really talk about it in depth to you guys there on YouTube uh, because I don't really know why. This is probably our most famous sting. The psychic is Thomas John. And the sting is called Operation Pizza Roll. Mark Edward comes up with all the names for all the different operations we've done. And <laughs> it's Operation Pizza Roll. And we'd never heard of Thomas John before we did this sting. Um, let's see how far I can get before I have to probably call it a day on this video and see how far I can get there. There's a lot. This is, this is a very detailed story, I guess, but just when you think it gets, you're, you're like, what? Oh my gosh. And then a minute or so later you go, what? Oh my gosh. It's, it, it just, it keeps giving the whole way through. Um, for for the few of you, or probably a lot of you out there who have never heard of Operation Pizza Roll, which is probably most of you guys, welcome to my channel. This is where we discuss and analyze um, how it is that psychics appear to be con communicating with the dead. And I have been researching psychics for about 10 years. I'm in the process of writing a book about it. It's very close to being done. Uh, Mark Edward, my partner, has been um, has written the book on um, the psychic world, what the business is like. In his book is called "Psychic Blues: Confessions of a Conflicted Medium," and uh, that's been out for many years. And it's a kind of a book that talks about his years in the psychic business, what it was like to be in the business, what's going on behind the scenes, um, back in the nine hundred years. Anyway. Let's see how I can do this with, without getting too withdrawn. I, I know the story so well. I'm going to show you screenshots and I'm going to play audio. I don't think I've ever done that before where I've had the audio and the, and the screenshots together. I have had, I have articles with the, with the screenshots in them. And then I have the audio up in a different place, but I don't think I've combined them together before. Okay. We had been doing quite a few stings um, trying to catch a psychic in a hot read hot read is the is the gold that you're looking for when you're trying to find catch a psychic in something because you can't get out of a hot read a hot read means they've done research on you ahead of time and they know something um, cold reading i mean it, it's so common that it's it's hard to uh you know catch somebody in it hot reading is much more involved and the thing about hot reading is is we wanted to catch a psychic in a hot read where the person who was being read the sitter the person who's in front of the, the psychic does not know what the information is that the psychic is pulling up in other words the only person who knows what that information is is the psychic even the person sitting in front of them getting the reading doesn't know the information it's called double blinding so this is very involved but we had been doing this and we had operation bubblebee uh, operation ice cream cone and um, it got time where we said, let's try it again. And one of my friends in Los Angeles said, hey, there's this guy. He's going to be in the area about the time I'm in uses and will be in L.A. Let's do this. 
Now, all the other stings we had done, we'd spent months on. I think Operation Bumblebee, I think we spent six months, three months, three months, I think it was, creating fake Facebook pages with information on them to make the Facebook pages look extremely real, like they had a history and everything. And we would just take those pages and we would change them up depending on what sting we were doing so that they kept their long history. But a person looking at the page wouldn't know any difference that, that now it's a different gender, it's a different name, it's a different, it has a different story on it. It's just too complicated to get into right now. It's in my book. <laughs> All right, so I didn't know who Thomas John was. I didn't know if we were gonna catch him in a hot read. We just decided we're gonna pull this off and this is what we did. So back in 2000 and let me look at the first post here. 2017 in March, um, we decided that this was going to be the person we were going to go to. I'm going to go to LA. I'm going to go into the venue. Mark Edwards is going to go into the venue with me as my spouse. Um, we're not married and we weren't married at the time or anything like that at this at the time. And we were going to go in as the sitters and we would go in and we would attend. We got the VIP passes, $160 or something like that, sat almost in the front row. And what happened is I had a different group of people who were volunteers from all over the world and they created the Facebook pages that told a story and I'm going to show you these pages and nothing's blocked out because the people that you're going to see on these Facebook pages don't exist and they the stories that are on these pages are not real and the premise was is that we would put these Facebook pages out there tagging Thomas John and then Mark and I would go into the venue having purchased our tickets under these names and sit down and see if the psychic called our called out our story. And Mark and I knew enough to be able to raise our hand so that we can get the microphone. So, you know, but after like the initial information, we don't know nothing. I mean, we are totally blind and it is really awkward to be sitting in the audience pretending to cry when the psychic is the one who knows what's on those pages and he's trying to guide you to, well, isn't this right? And you're like, uh, yeah. So this is very awkward, you guys, to listen to. So bear, bear with me. Now, there's a ton of information on these screenshots. So I suggest that maybe what you want to do, if you're really interested, if you're if you're interested, is to go and look at these screenshots and like, you know, freeze the video and come back and, and freeze it. Also, you can read about the uh, whole investigation. It was in the New York Times magazine. Right here we are. Um, March 2019. It took a very long time to get this published. You you'll have to. I mean, it's a long story. Why? Here we are, centerfold. I got the centerfold. There it is. Are some celebrity mediums fooling their audience members by reading Facebook pages in advance? A group of online vigilantes is out to prove it by Jack Hitt. And then it goes on. Page after page after that it ends and then it goes an article on Rembrandt and I've always thought it was really interesting who is in this who is in the magazine who probably read you know they they had an article about themselves and they said oh is my article out in the New York Times magazine let's see who else is who oh wow what's a story about a, a psychic vigilante group and uh, I've always found that really kind of interesting visualizing them reading the article this is about Trump the Trump administration. There's, oh, there's Michael J. Fox, an article about him. So I'm, I'm hoping he read my, read the article. Um, there's something about employees, something about food. This is a magazine that comes out every Sunday in the New York Times. It's a huge, big deal. 
Oh, this is um an article about Lindsey Graham. And then our article and and so on. I think Mark Mike Pompeo's in here, something about a family that does Rembrandt. This is a huge deal. I'm told this is at least a million views. That's how many subscribers are going to look at that. The online article is here. I'm going to show you. And if you go to my, I'm going to put it, the link in my, in the website. I mean, in the description below. I'm sorry I'm taking so long. I knew this is probably why I didn't want to do this video because I knew that I know the story so well that I would just start rambling. And I hope, I hope you guys can bear with me, but here's, <laughs> here's the uh, New York Times article. Uh, if you, uh, the link is down below. So here's the article. I have it in the Wayback Machine so you can actually look at it without having to have a subscription to the New York Times. This, just getting into the New York Times was insane because, I mean, I, the things they have to go through, the the reporting they have to do, they even interviewed Thomas John, Jack Hitt, that's the reporter. He even interviewed Thomas uh, John. Um, Inside this article is another sting we did. It's called Operation Peach Pit, and it's with Matt Frazier. So they're blended together. So I'm not going to talk about Peach Pit right now. That's something else you can you can um, look up on my website, or maybe I'll do a video on it. it it's it's um it's a it's interesting, very very interesting. You know, I, I should I should do that, but let's let's get through this one here first. Sorry, you guys, it's just a lot. Okay, here we go. As I said, you might want to later um, pause the video so that you can read these things. It might be a little blurry, but we'll, we'll see. It's also on my website if you really want to see these and read the detail of it. But it's a story. So here's Susanna Forsyth Wilson, which is me. Now, I do not have access to these Facebook pages. And Mark Edward had no access to these Facebook pages before we went to the event. Um, what, what happens is other people created the story and the story they created couldn't be tied to us in any way. It couldn't be anything that was accurate. Like it, it, they couldn't say, um, you know, that I had a daughter. I mean, they couldn't say I had a son because I have a son. They had to say a daughter or something of the sort. It couldn't be anything that was real to either of us. It had to be totally opposite. We didn't want it to be confused. We didn't want the psychic to say something. And then we go, hmm, I wonder if he got that from actually reading me, like he says he does, reads people, or if he got it from the Facebook page. All right. So this is um, talking about how I'm having like dreams about my brother who's who died of pancreatic cancer in 2013 and how sad I was. And all my friends, these are all fake people. All my friends are talking about maybe you should, you know, have some therapy or whatever. And, you know, because I, I just couldn't let it go. Apparently, see, I don't know this stuff until after I read it. So here's here's somebody saying, hey, Susanna, I'm going to ask around in my group if anybody's had a reading, let me check. It's this guy, Thomas John Manhattan, medium guy, right? And you can see it's highlighted there. That's because it's it's a link. It's a hyperlink. So that means that Thomas John Manhattan Medium's Facebook page is going to get a notification. They've been tagged somewhere else on Facebook. So they it gives them the like, oh, look, there's somebody who's tagging me. I think I'll go and look and read what's going on about these people. And um, so they're talking about my twin I don't have a twin. I don't have a brother that has died or anything like that. But here's my twin, Andy. They created a twin, Andy, for me. Um, and are you are you going to go to the event with Mark? And I said, yeah. And, and they're saying, oh, I wish I could go. And wouldn't it be amazing if Andy came through? I think the last time after he died, I think the medium knew how to connect, but maybe it was too soon. All I want to say is, you know, I'm a little skeptical. Don't be set back if Andy doesn't reach out. We know he's looking out for you. Twins are close forever. And then uh, Vicky's talking about playing some music because Andy likes music. He likes to play Born to Run in the car and, and I should play some music and, and 
help to make the story come forward. So then here it is. Um, I'm tagging event, you know, I'm on the Eventbrite um, ad for Thomas John. And I'm saying I'm going to be attending is what I'm saying. And that I'm really cautious about it. I'm really worried about it. It's going to be really stressful, I know. But um, And uh, Gregory Davis, who doesn't exist, is saying that he's talking about Thomas John at work and one of those skeptics and how mean they can be and and on and on. Okay, let's see what else is here. Um, that's just a more close-up of that same article. Um... All right, so here's an, here's an article that somebody shared on the Susanna Forsyth Wilson page. You can't find these on Facebook either. These pages, these Facebook pages are all locked down. You won't be able to find them by, by looking for them. They're, they're, they still exist, but they're, but they're so closed down that we have them saved for reporters to be able to look at. They're preserved um, Facebook pages, but I don't have them, you know, if I need to use them at a court um, action or something like that everything is preserved but you personally you guys can't go and just find them on your own so i don't have a problem showing you these things they're not there this is identical twins get all the press and we're talking about psychic bonds with the twins and that my brother was born 13 minutes before me um just before he's diagnosed in 2015 he'd been having stomach pains now my twin this twin of mine andy he um, supposedly dies, I think, in 2016, and I go see Thomas John in 2017. So it's very recent. It's a recent death. Here I'm sharing, or my account is sharing pancreatic cancer awareness. Cancer awareness in March. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Um, oh, this is good. Um, and I'll, uh, this is foreshadowing what's going to happen in a minute. So Michael's saying, you know, I hope that Andy comes through or Mark's dad or hell, even Buddy the dog. Mind you, that black lab was the dumbest and, and never came when he was called. So he probably won't show up at the at the event tonight with Thomas John. And that he's, and he's saying, you know, I'm just teasing you. I'm just trying to keep it lighthearted. He's, and I said, oh, I probably still have clothes Buddy shed on now that I think about it. And then Heather is saying again, don't forget to play Born to Run. Keep that music. Don't forget all that, the you know, air guitar competition we had and, and all the music that was in our lives together and stuff like that. So don't forget all that. And let's see. Okay, that's just a close-up of that other one that's saying that, um, you know, identical twins get all the press, but we're fraternal and we have a psych, we feel like we have a psychic connection. Okay, hopefully I have, have, um, all right. Okay, now, <laughs> so Mark and I show up at the event. We take some photos and I will show you the photos we took and of this place. It wasn't very many people. I didn't know what to expect. I've never been here before. It's called the Federal. And there's all these people standing, you know, sitting around waiting. Some people are eating. Thomas John is nowhere to be seen. And again, here's he's going to be up on the stage. So I don't know, 35, 40 people show up. We've um, paid, like I say, about $160 a person to go. Here he is on the stage. You can see how close I am. I think I'm in the second or third row. There he is. He stayed in that position the whole night with his eyes closed. Um, other than getting a drink of water up here, he did not move. He just was totally still, totally stationary as if he was, and he said he was listening to, he was listening to the, to the spirits as they were coming in. And he got hit after hit after hit after hit. I think we're the third or second or third reading. And um, his manager came up on the stage first and she says, hey, it's so nice to see so many friendly faces here tonight that, you know, we've seen multiple times. And if you're not rec recording, go ahead and record. And I'm like, oh, yeah, honey, I'm recording. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> we were recording multiple ways. Uh, here's Mark. Uh, Mark is a professional mentalist. Um, his expertise is in seance. 
um, especially the Victorian seance, Houdini seance. That's his expertise. He performed at the Magic Castle for, oh my gosh, since the 1970s. And he was just there recently, this last year. So he's a performing mentalist. And uh, he did the psychic thing for years too, which is mentalism, but mentalism and psychics, some of the tricks are the same, except that mentalists, it's, it's they're magicians, right? But anyway. So one of the things he always talks about is take a twisted piece of um, Kleenex out of your pocket and just twist the heck out of it. And just, it helps a lot. And so here he is with his twisted Kleenex. Let's see here. Here's Thomas John again. So Thomas John's going to call out something and I'm going to have to raise my hand and say, I think you're talking about me. Now, Thomas John does know about this. Okay. He doesn't like it. He's got all sorts of excuses. First, the excuses were that, oh, he didn't actually mean from, I took the reading from somebody else that I wasn't the subject. It turns out it was a lady behind me. He says that he got an email from some lady later and she said, oh, all of that fit my brother, not that woman who said her reading was her. Of course, we've never heard this lady. We don't know who he's talking about. Um, nobody's seen this email, but this is the excuse he uses. He says that that I stole the reading from somebody else. Now you can listen to this and you tell me if you think I stole this reading from somebody else. And we we stayed in character the whole time, all the way till the end, till we walked out of that building. We were in character, and people were talking to us and we talked to them and I have the audio of all the conversations that I had with all the people in there that day. And nobody ever said anything to me other than how wonderful you got a reading. And, Oh, when I got a reading from Thomas John recently, this, you know, and they're telling me all sorts of stories. They just open up. These are wonderful, friendly, lovely, lovely people who are there have, having had readings, they totally believe in Thomas John. So there's absolutely no, you know, this is just a far-fetched story. He's saying that I took somebody else's reading. Well, if it's, if I took somebody else's reading, that's a, that's a, that's amazing because the stuff that came through is I'm going to play for you. I'm sorry. I'm going on again. Okay. Let's get to the audio because I know you're waiting for it. Okay. Hold on. So these are all very short clips, the entire reading from the beginning to the end, from when he first, you know, said, I'm getting a twin and I raised my hand and then they brought over a microphone and they gave it to me until we were all the way done is 15 minutes. Um, Thomas John often says, oh yeah, well, I gave this reading to her for like two minutes and she's made such a big deal out of it. Like, no, it is not two minutes. It is 15 minutes. And you can listen to it in its entirety on my website. And you always could listen to it. As soon as the New York Times article came out, I was I was free to share whatever I wanted to. It is 15 minutes, but I'm not going to play a full 15 minutes for you guys. I'm just going to play little bits and they're like 20 seconds long. So, and then I'm going to show you the screenshot. So as, as they're playing. So keep that in mind that um, there's there's a lot going on in the background. Okay. So there's a screenshot of Susanna Forsyth Wilson and the twin brothers. And I, he's about to, he's already said, I'm getting a twin out there and somebody wants to get in touch with his sister. And then I raise my hand. They bring me a microphone, and then he repeats this again. And this is what you're hearing. Somebody's twin. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I have to tell you, just as soon as I'm tapping into you, somebody's making me aware of cancer. Is this your brother? Did he have cancer? Yes. Okay. Because he's shown me cancer. And I get in here, which to me would show me stomach or pancreas. Do you understand? Yes. Me? Okay. So he's he's stepping forward. Now this feels quite recent to me in terms of he didn't die a long time ago, right? No. Okay, so you can hear me crying. And um, well, I'm not really crying. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. This is what you do in investigative work like this. So he said, I have pancreatic cancer. I'm getting a twin. 
and he hasn't been going long. That's all that's all on the Facebook page. It's also all the stuff I know. I know I have a twin. I know his name is Andy. I know he died of pancreatic cancer and I know it was recent. So it's at this moment, he's told me stuff that I also know that was on the Facebook page. So Andy had a Facebook page, Andy Forsyth. That was my brother, the twin brother. So we had created, somebody had created these pages and they were, um, you know, he had things happening on his page yeah. and um, they're older because obviously he's died since, right? I hope this isn't confusing because even as I'm relaying it to you, it does seem a little confusing. All right, here's the next clip. I, I feel that even when you were young and stuff, I sense that you and, who's Andy? Andy? That's my brother. That's your brother. So I feel like you and Andy, I feel like you and Andy, I feel like you always kind of share this energy between you where you could kind of like hear each other's thoughts and things like that. Oh and, and and one of the things your brother is saying is, is even though he's crossed over, you still have that connection with him. You still oh, have yes. that yet. And, um, very close. yes. And he's saying that will, <clears throat> that will definitely continue. Okay, so Andy and I have share a connection, a psychic connection. That's part of the screenshots that I have um, that were on the Facebook page. All right, let's see. Now, where should we go? Where should we go? Oh, there's a Andy shared a whole lot of photos on his Facebook page of dogs. Let me show you. I think there's three that we have I have for you right now. So here's a dog, daily puppy, cutest ever, Andy saying in March 2010. That's how old these Wikipedia these Facebook pages are. Is they've been around for a long time because we've been doing this for a very long time. Here's a picture with pampering for paws video that we that we put on the page. And, oh, and then, of course, we were talking about Buddy, right? We were talking about this dog named Buddy. Well, somebody's talking about dog named Buddy and how hopefully Buddy comes through and he was a Labrador. And um, and so, you know, we've been talking about dogs. So here's the, here's the audio. And also, uh, hold on. Oh, did he have dogs? Yes. Okay. Family did. Because he's all telling time. me also over there, just on the other side, he's he's actually taking care of dogs. Oh, that's wonderful. And um, you don't have. Oh. I I I just agreeing to him. I don't know what's on the Facebook page. I don't know if my my dog brother, my twin brother, who does not exist, uh, <laughs> I don't know if he has dogs, but I assume he does. I mean, that seems pretty common that you would have a dog. And. This was, oh, here we go. Now, remember, I don't know what's on these Facebook pages. I don't know anything about a dog. I don't know anything about a dog's name. And uh, Buddy? Mm -hmm. Who's that? Is that a nickname for somebody? Buddy? Yeah, it's my, my father's. Oh, your father's nickname? Well, it was a junior, too, so they sometimes called Andy that, too. Oh, okay, okay, okay. A couple of people. So okay, so that might just be more with, you, more with your brother. I don't know who Buddy is. But Thomas John knows who Buddy is. Thomas John is a, is the Labrador dog that belonged to Andy. Now he's getting probably pretty suspicious up there on the stage going, how come this woman doesn't know who Buddy is when it's clearly they were writing about Buddy? Focus on your brother because I feel like I'm getting, getting a lot with him and stuff. Now, um, one of the things I want to tell you also is <clears throat> there, I hear the name Catherine. Yes. Um, who is that? She's very close. Okay. She's just a close friend and stuff. I'm sorry. I'm just really emotional. That's okay. Hard. That's okay. But we, we do have other people here to read. So we have right. to kind of just. No, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She's yes. a friend of yours. Yes, okay. Yes. I don't think that's the connection. So I'm going to just leave that because I, I'm hearing Catherine like somebody who's left. Um, I'll go back to that. I also feel with your brother a uh, yes. very, very strong sense of humor. Um, yes. I can feel that he was extremely funny. One of the things he's telling me that, uh, one thing I can tell about you is that 
<clears throat> you're very wanting to connect with him. I can feel oh, yes, like you, yes. you know, you want him to guide you, you want to feel him around you, things like that. Yes. And one of the things he's saying is that he, he will do that. He will, he will be around you a lot. Um, <clears throat> and um, pay attention to a couple things. One thing is, is he's telling me that he's going to do something with music. Um, he, um, I feel like this would be like putting on, you know, songs that would connect with him, um, things like that. But it would be something that I also he's bringing this up and he brought it up three times and he's like, almost like he wants to bring this up really, really strongly. Maria, Maria, Maria. Do you know who that is? Because he's bringing up Maria. That will, well, yeah. His girlfriend. Yeah. Okay. Um, and um, but she's in the living world, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, also, he's saying, don't feel like you didn't do enough for him because he feels like um, <clears throat> one of the things, I, I got that there was a misdiagnosis, so I don't know how that fits in, but I don't know if he like thought that he had something else and then he didn't, or he thought, I don't know. There was he, a lot of questions. Yeah, a lot have. of confusion and stuff. And um, I need to also tell you too um, that one of the, okay, hold on one second. Um, okay. He's also telling me to. Hmm, do you have any? Do you have any connection to like a foreign country? Do you have any family? I mean. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you, so you guys have family overseas or something? Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, different places. Different places. Okay. Um, I want to tell you too just what I'm what I'm hearing here, but. Um, <clears throat> he, he's saying that he's also going to, by the way, they're, I, I, like her, but this isn't really a, a, a thing that I'm very excellent at, but it comes through. So your dog is here. Must be your dog, because there's a dog here. Um, and um, I want to tell you all. Okay, so my dog's coming through. I don't have a dog. I don't think I've had a dog. Well, I mean, we had probably a dog when I was a baby and younger, but we've almost always had cats. But anyway, <laughs> okay, well, my dog's coming through. I want to show this picture to you. And this is really, I, I showed it to you really quick, but look, look at it again. Look, it's on the forehead of this baby. This is one of these filler pictures that, that my team just put in because they're creating these pages. This is from 2014. And it says, I love, and it looks like it says Maria. <laughs> So that and the post where it says, hey, did you get married to Maria? That post. And actually, this is Mariah, I think. It doesn't say Maria, but, you know. Okay. Um, almost done. There were several surprises in here for us. Um, the I, I have no idea who Catherine might have been. And we don't know what the foreign connection is. We have a guess. But let me play this other little thing for you really quick. I mean, these are just very quick clips now. Watch. I mean, listen. Is there a connection at all to Michigan? Yeah. Okay. What is what is there? Well, that's where we're from. Oh, Michigan. you're from there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I'm for some reason I was seeing the state of Michigan. Okay. So you're you're that that's where your brother, you and him grew up there and stuff? Well, Part part time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I need to tell you also too. Okay. At this point, I'd never been to Michigan and my team didn't know anything about it because when, when the reading's over, then I'm able to text them and say, okay, you know, they're, they're on the other end, they're living all over the world and they're going, well, what happened? And we're saying, well, he got something about Michigan and something about Maria and Buddy and I don't know what these things were mean. I don't, I don't know who they are. And, you know, my team texts is back. Oh, buddy's the dog. It's, it's one of, it's Andy's dog. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I said, buddy was my dad's nickname. <laughs> um, and who's Maria? And they're, I, I, Thomas John said it was probably his girlfriend, his wife. And they said, yeah, he got married to Maria. I'm like, okay, that's good. He got that right. And I said, what, what is the thing about, um, a foreign country or Michigan, they didn't have a clue. 
And this thing was, we thought about this later and we looked it up. And this is possibly where they're getting either the foreign country or the Michigan or maybe both. But when you're creating these Wikipedia, I mean, <laughs> these Facebook pages, like in 2010, these Facebook pages have lasted for a very long time. All different kinds of things that were used for ghost hunting. And we've used them for a lot of things. And when we created them, the pictures and all that were there. And then we changed the people's names. So then, you know, this might have been used for somebody completely different at one point, in the, but the image is still there. My team didn't put this image up because this is put up in 2010, but it says Frenchman's Creek Cornwall. Cornwall is in the UK. It is not in Michigan. But um, so that might have been where he got the foreign connection. He was trying to guess that. But what we did is we Googled, we Googled Frenchman's Creek Cornwall. And one of the first hits that came up at the time, I don't know if it's still true, you know, Google, it's been a few years, how that is. And this is one of the first things that came up. Michigan, Cornwall, Cornwall Creek flowage map. She began County, Michigan fishing. This is a map of Michigan that came up uh, whenever we, you just Googled Cornwall Creek or, or Fisherman's Creek and fishing Cornwall Creek and Michigan came up. So we think that might be where they got the Michigan, why he was asking about Michigan or he's asking about a foreign connection. You know, we don't know because we're not in Thomas John's head, but I, I think that's very likely what it was. And I'm only speculating, but I'm pretty confident that that's what it is because everything's always tied to something else. And this other one, I think this is the last one I'm going to show you or have you listened to. I think this is the very last one. This is another surprise. And again, this is another page, a uh, thing that had been put up on the Facebook page far before we used it for this sting it, itself was, um, and this caught me off guard. I don't know what it was. And it's this. Now listen to what Thomas John says and listen how he's going to argue with me. But somebody's talking about they were smoker, 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 and they quit. I think it's your brother. Is that true? Did yeah. he smoke and then quit? Did he quit uh, smoking? Yeah. Several times. No, 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 your brother, the twin, the twin. Oh, my brother? Yes. Well, my brother did, too. Yeah, well, both, both of ours did. <laughs> no, but I think it's your bro your twin. Did he did he quit smoking? Yes, yes. Okay, okay so he, he quit smoking. Okay, so... This is a post that just was up and my team didn't even realize it was up there. It was one of those life events. In 2013, Andy Forsyth quit smoking. And the only person who noticed that was Thomas John. We didn't intentionally put it up there, but it was on Andy's Facebook page. So what's up with that? <laughs> so not only was he not too kind to me because I was crying because I was so confused, but I was crying and my reading was no, wasn't taking that long. He just expected me to just to verify, 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 verify. And I wasn't verifying quick enough for him. So you heard his comment about, well, I said, you know, I'm really emotional. I'm talking to my dead brother here. And he's like, well, I know, but we got to move on. You heard him. Lovely man. Lovely. He's just been in contact with my my dear departed twin brother that doesn't exist. And he, he I, I'm emotional. Heck yeah. Wouldn't you be emotional? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm laughing. I, I shouldn't be laughing. So anyway, I'm going to end it here because I've already got to dub all this in and get them in all everything screenshots changed around, you know, make sure it's, it's, it, it's, it's recorded right. And I, I didn't hit pause and then forget, or I got to double check all this and it's already going to be long enough as a video, but so I'm going to put the link to the New York times article in the um, description. Um, I've talked about this many times. And it's been in lectures and people have interviewed me about operation pizza roll. It's like, it's a thing. Thomas John, I'm sure, has got numerous excuses. I mean, did that sound like to you that I took somebody else's reading? No. In fact, he said, 
here's what she, he said, and I might have it in writing somewhere, or I might have a video of him saying this, that the woman emailed him later, and she said that her brother's name was Andrew, but everybody called him Mike. But I took the reading when it was probably meant for her. Does that make sense? So if her dead brother, who wasn't her twin, who didn't die pancreatic cancer, and he hadn't died recently. So if her brother had said, um, had come through to talk to his sister, he's going to use the word Mike. He's not, the name Mike, he's not going to use Andrew. That's his formal name. He didn't use Andrew in, in life. That was just his real name. He was Andrew Michael, and he always was called Mike. And that's the story that Thomas John told us is, um, it said that they, that the woman had written him an email saying that her brother named Andrew came through that night, but his name in, everybody called him Mike. And I, he might've died of cancer, but not pancreatic cancer. And it was a long time ago. And so Thomas John has been saying stuff about this reading Operation uh, Pizza Roll for a very long time. He's absolutely not happy about it. If you bring it up to him, he gets very upset or maybe he'll play it off and say, oh no, well those, she's, you know, make some kind of derogatory comment about me being a crazy woman with cats. Yeah, I have cats. I like cats. I also like dogs too, but I do have cats. My cats don't like dogs, so I can't have both. Um, and maybe I am crazy. I am crazy to be doing this. Can you believe this? You know how much I'm making from this? zero <laughs> so yeah maybe there's something wrong with me for doing these things people tell me all the time like what an ax is and i just don't I, I i don't like people taking advantage of other people's emotions and grief like this this is this is cruel so before i leave you if you've enjoyed this please subscribe leave me comments I'm going to come out with the other videos. Let me give me a chance to get this one out. And um, I should probably say that people are constantly asking me, why don't you get a reading for Thomas John and, and judge for yourself? Why don't you get a reading from Thomas John? This is a reading from Thomas John. This is a huge reading for Thomas John. I was sitting there for 15 minutes. He read me and all he read was not the dear departed around me, because I have lots of people around me who have died. He could easily have read any of those people. If he was really a psychic medium, he should have said, ah, I'm seeing your parents and I'm seeing your, you know, this and I'm seeing that, real things. But no, what he's reading is my, the Facebook pages that we signed up with. He's reading those. That we tagged him and we said, hey, we'll be at your event. And he looked at my brother who doesn't exist Facebook page. And at no time, even when he was up there on the stage thinking this is strange because those people don't know anything about their family. He still kept on. So the I've got lots more to tell you, you guys. There's so much more. Mark had a reading with him. And we have Facebook pictures as well, screenshots from there. We had a VIP with him. One of his stooges was in the audience. One of his one of his uh, his students who got a reading from him playing along. We had another woman who was, you know, I've got all sorts of audio. We've got more photos, more audio. So let's see how this does. If you guys comment on it a lot and I get some subscribers from it, I'll do the other videos. So let's see. Like I said, it takes me along. I apologize. I apologize how long it takes, but it, it's not. Um, this is like a job doing these videos. Anyway, this is part one. Stay tuned for part two and maybe part three. <laughs>